Dude, Jim Ursay is still chirping about that shit. Did you hear that? It was the two or three picks in the last game. Right? Yeah. Jim Ursay is still chirping like last week about Carson Wentz, bro. It's like a he's like a fucking a beaten down ex boyfriend. Yeah. It's like watching his girlfriend marry some like lawyer. But I think McLaurin like, That slut has herpes, dude. <laughs> like you gave her the herpes. I don't care. Yeah. She still has herpes. Fuck that. She yeah. fucked me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking whore. No, I think McLaurin is a dark horse. Yeah, just had our awesome draft. Found that again. Ah, beautiful, yeah, beautiful, yeah, beautiful. Yeah. beautiful. Uh, you want to read our team off for everyone? Uh, uh, I can read it off. Uh, so my, my notepad's over there. Oh, I can read it off real quick here. All right, twelve team uh, full PPR league, three receivers and a flex. Got Jalen Hurts at quarterback, four for a passing touchdown, which makes Hurts awesome. Yeah. Hurts as a, as a quarter uh, our quarterback. Dobbins and Elliott are our running backs. Diggs, Lamb, DJ Moore is our receivers, full love PPR. It, love it. George Kittle is a tight end. Love We're it. not even the Kittle guys. We got him in like the sixth but, round. Love it. Uh, Tony Pollard right now is in our flex uh, because we have cars a backup. We have Melvin Gordon, Cleo Herbert. Um, those are our backup running backs. And our receivers are Claypool, Nico Collins, Brian Edwards, Will Fuller, KJ Hamler. So we have an, uh, we have an issue with flex. I'm saying it's because we all we took I think that's the only we're, we're, we're every yeah. single week we're we're Fighting for that one position. Yeah, we have a premium quarterback in this format. We have a top five tight end. We have the best receivers in the league, and we have, I'd say, average running backs with the best receivers in the league. So, well, when Dobbins, like, I think we got a steal on Dobbins. Yeah, right. Yeah, Dobbins sixth round, um, so, twelve team league. So, anyways, I'm happy with it. Yeah, Rob Square. Yeah, it's gonna be a fun episode here. Uh, we got this idea the other day when he was going through player props, and we like yeah. to do that. We're about to have our player props prop segment. We go through our top like seven or eight. Player prop bets, whether it be over unders, passing yards, passing touchdowns, receiving yards, whatever. Yeah. Uh, the guys we like and the yeah. guys we hate in terms of the bets we're gonna make. Uh, and before that, we were just going through, and he was like kind of quizzing me on all these things. So what I thought I'd do, you did very, uh, I was you did like, very, very like, well. one passing touchdown. I wish we did that live. That yeah, I do too. Yeah. Uh, but this is the next best thing because this would be more uh, informational here. Sure. So what we did here, what we're gonna do is kind of compare. Uh, ADP versus what Vegas is projecting these guys, right? Yeah, okay. And we trust Vegas a little more than we trust ADP. So it will kind of mix it all together and see where the values are, who, who they're fading, who they're pushing up. Sure. Uh, you know, based kind of, on ADP. I mean, right. the, the, the exercise makes a lot of sense. Great. Really it's great. Uh, I do have a couple things for you. Sure. Um, you know, I am always prepared with some kind of nonsense. Let's go. Uh, yeah. What you got? So uh, Dennis Rodman. Oh, you're Apparently he's going to this? fucking Russia to help out Brittany Griner because he's got a really good uh, relationship with Putin. Good lord! Just funny, like Dennis Rodman is our ambassador. No, he's trying to be. He, he was. With, Doesn't uh, he have a good relationship with like North Korea too? Yeah, Kim Jong. So he just he just goes to all the places that like we don't like and just hey guys, I'm Dennis Rodman. Can I do some cocaine with your hookers? Wow! <laughs> Love you, Dennis. I mean, that's essentially. I mean, oh man. So if he's Brittany Griner's hope, good Lord help us. Like are we gonna have John Daly coming out as the next fucking maybe. ambassador? Like Jesus, man. Maybe, maybe. Yeah, yeah. I just thought that was interesting. And like Brittany so, Griner, we haven't updated this yet. If you haven't heard, she got nine years, not ten, like they were saying. Oh my God, nine fucking years for weed. You think she No, but she's already been enough time. She's been there too long. I agree. Crazy, crazy, crazy. I agree. And also, I do have a story time and rap for you. It's about an anonymous friend of ours. Uh, this guy has a party. Yeah, we don't know who he is. No. Uh, you, you may know, you may not know. No clue. It is involving your house, though, or party. Great party. Uh, so you used to have, you used to live with your dad, your brothers. You had the old basement, right? Yeah. yeah. What do you used to call it? The cave. The cave, right. It was dark, right? It's where the ghost story happened. A lot of stories, you know, you with your through the years. The hot tamales. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of stories involving this cave. And you used to have some pretty epic parties down there. 
Sure. So anyway, the, our buddy, uh, who, he was not to be named, uh, he's a very skinny, he was a very skinny guy. Yeah. Uh, not, no muscles. Yeah. No muscles, yeah. <laughs> uh, so this happened, we, I went there with him, and you already had the party kind of going. There was already probably 12, 14 people there, a couple yeah. girls, like whatever. Yeah. Everyone's already been raging for a few hours. We get there like 11. And his thing was, he did this forever, and I always told him, I was like, pace yourself. And he always said, oh, I got to catch up. I'm like, no, you don't. We're going to be partying until 5 in the morning. You got five hours. Just just pace yourself. You can go, fuck that, bro. And we used to, used to smoke a lot of weed, too. And the combination is not good, liquor and weed. So he, well, he, in this instance, it wasn't much of a weed thing. It was pounding I, I, shit. Yeah, I, I have some Gatorade and I have some vodka. Right. So, yeah. And so he just decided to mix those. Right. A, a small bottle of, of Gatorade and a big bottle of vodka. So, you know, what is his move was is a water bottle. He'd fill up a water bottle on top, which is 16 ounces, which is a fuckload of booze. Like, what is that, 10 shots? Especially for like, for a small guy size, and not, in, yeah. our, in our age. And if you drink it in 30 minutes. Yeah. That's what you do. You gotta catch up. He's yeah, just right. sitting there pounding. I'm like, dude, what are you doing? He's like, let's start smoking bombs. I'm like, you just drank a whole water bottle. Don't do that. Yeah. Dude, so literally, I always made it, the joke was he always went from zero to 100. Like, he never even got to have fun because it was like sober to like for 10 minutes he enjoyed himself to being sick. <laughs> it's like you're just well, making yourself sick and pass out. We, we often talk about the, the ghost story. Mm -hmm. The only ghost I've ever seen was this individual At night. drinking uh, like a whole fifth of fucking vodka yeah. with this Gatorade bottle. Yeah. He decided, I, I'm going to get hammered because this right. is going to be an epic party. Right. So he decided that, and I've never seen someone so, so pale. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say, within 40 minutes, he's literally sitting there like nodding off, passed out, and fucking white, dude. He was knocked out before him. Yeah. Like, really, the, the blind of the party showed up. I was like, yo, like, Bones, you okay? He's like, I'm fine, dude. I'm just resting my eyes. Yeah. Okay, dude. Five minutes later, he's puking all over the place. Yeah. Literally. And there's already enough Wait, people there. Bones? The Bones? Oh, no, no. <laughs> it's not Bones. Did I say Bones? That's it. Cut. Uh, all right, so either way, you're like, half the room was like, puke. Puke on. Yeah. So anyway, he was we were all pissed, people but other people that were there that weren't like necessarily close friends of ours were even more angry. They didn't really know him. So here's the kicker of the story. They found two rolls of duct tape in your basement. You, Your dad was out of town, I believe, this night, so the, the upstairs couch was there. Went to California. He, They duct taped Bones, because he went to lay down on his couch upstairs. They duct, when two rolls of duct tape, they duct taped him, like, dude, so much duct tape. To a, a to couch. couch. Yeah, and stood the couch up, so he's standing yeah, up. Like, and he was Like Hannibal Lecter kind of thing, bro. Yeah, yeah. And he finally wakes up, and he's duct taped. Okay. Wake up. Hey, what's up, dudes? What's up? Tell us everything now. Talk, Red. I'm gonna flex and bust out of here. Trapped. It's not happening. Dude, and like, we didn't help him out of it. It took him a couple hours, I think. We well, no, were like, like, what the fuck? Guess what, man? As a good friend of his, he kind of deserved it. Maybe not that treatment, but you know what I'm saying? It could have been worse. Yeah. It could have been yeah. much worse. Just, just crazy. Well, he was and... just passed. Like, he decided to get too drunk, <sighs> passed out on yeah. the couch, and it happened to be that we were with the. Uh, uh, yeah, we didn't do it, but we well, didn't well, stop it either. I mean, well, are we ever? Like, yeah, it's not our job. It. Yeah. I mean, it's... so th that is just one of a couple. We've told a couple. This guy's anonymous. We don't know who he is, but there's a lot more we're going to have here. <laughs> no, no, no muscles or Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All bones. All bones. All, bones. Yeah. All right, here. We'll do the exercise here. ADP yeah. versus Vegas. We're going to start with quarterbacks here, fellas. Quarterbacks. Uh, and I'm going to put a, kind of a picture of the, what, what I wrote down here for you guys to see. Uh, what, like, jumps out at you first? Uh, I'll tell you the first thing that jumped out at me was in these six for passing touchdown leagues, the ones that aren't really rushing centric where you get sure. bonuses for, you know, not bonuses for rushing, but when it's four for passing touchdown, you get six for a rushing touchdown. Yeah. You want the rushing The guy that back. rushes for 10 touchdowns yeah. means uh, a lot more than the guy that rushes for two. Right. Uh, also, the leagues with passing bonuses, you don't want a rushing quarterback because you're generally not going to get the passing. Four bonus. for passing, you want the rushing quarterback. Right. So, I mean, but a league general that has, thumb, let's like, say a league that has three point bonus for 300 yards passing, Lamar Jackson is going to have that three times a year. Tom Brady might have that nine. That's yeah. going to add up to 27 points. Sure, sure. So, like, those th different things. Anyway, what we notice here is that these late guys, Rodgers, Stafford, Prescott, Brady, Cousins, Derek Carr, are pretty much even out in terms of yardage and almost touchdowns with the Allens, Herberts, Mahomes. Yeah, I, I think it's more – there's a lot of Twitter heroes, I would say. Mm -hmm. like people there are – 
social media hero. It was like obviously Herbert. Like Herbert's the biggest standout to me. Yes, Mahomes has the highest yard total. Mahomes is an obvious one because Mahomes uh-huh. is like, I mean, just in terms of public perception, Mahomes is the guy. Right. right? Like, so I'm gonna throw down here. I would say the same with Herbert. I think Herbert's a little over evaluated. So I'm going to uh, compare this right now. Matt Stafford, who is going, shit, quarterback 12, quarterback 13. He is projected, his over-under is 4,500 yards passing, 34 and a half touchdowns. This is a bet you can actually make. Okay, yes. Yeah. Justin Herbert is 4,700 yards and 36.5. Who is, okay, let's go to Mahomes. 4,650, which is literally 150 yards more, and 34.5, and Stafford has 34.5. Yeah. Same numbers projected. Yeah. Right? But I'm going to bet the under on those Stafford numbers, as you are too. Yeah, yeah. Especially um, with, uh, I know the tendonitis, it, it's, yeah. it's something you can play through, but at the same time, if you don't think it's going to affect him, you're, you're wrong. It's going to, at, it, least, it, at least in it, terms it, of, uh, for, the know, whole, for his whole the, season. Like you said, the practicing. Like, for the whole season, practice? he's not going to practice. Like, yeah. He, he's not practicing. He, he won't. So here's another one here. Uh, Joe Burrow, who's getting kind of overdrafted depending on the, the league, sometimes like quarterback six. Uh, he is 44.50 passing yards, 33.5. Where do you think? Touchdowns? Where, where, where are you on those stats, though? 44. Uh, he'll go over that in yards for sure, okay. if you like. His passing touchdowns? That's pretty close. I mean, he'll go higher. 33 and a half. But my comparison is Kirk Cousins, 4,231.5. That's pretty close, dude. Not too far off. Right. And Kirk but Cousins is 15. Where are you going seven rounds later? Right. So, like, depending on your league format, I mean, definitely super flex, dude. No reason to take any of these early guys. Well, super flex. You have to take them early. I mean, it depends. You Would to. you rather have Kirk Cousins in the fourth or fucking Justin Herbert in the first? All right. Well, again, so what I'm saying early, like yeah, early super flex is super flex is rough because mm-hmm. I, I I would I like this year for super flex in terms of quarterback. So deep, yeah. So deep. I mean, the last guy let's written down here is Trevor Lawrence, four thousand yards, twenty two and a half touchdowns. We both think that's kind of kind of low. I think, yeah. I, I would. Um, I'm hoping. I think if not, then he's a bust, right? Yeah. Yeah. Even right? that, like, that it, this, this, number. This or that, right? Like. Um. All right. Let's move on to running backs here. Um. We're gonna go into wide receivers pretty deep because that's the. Yeah, give me your your thoughts real quick. Uh, as I as I look over this running back page, anything that jumps out to you? We we mentioned that Russell Wilson seemed a little low. 4,100 yards and 31 and a half touchdowns. Yeah. Pretty fair. The yards seem low because he is lower than Cousins. All right. So I'm looking at the number one quarterback. Derek Carr. Allen. Oh, at nice. 30, 35 and a half. Yeah. Where if you're looking at someone like, I'm just trying, I'm throwing out a number here. Stafford, which I don't necessarily agree with this number, but Allen is a third round draft pick. Yeah. Where Stafford is a 10th or 11th yeah, round right. draft pick. Should not be the case. So it's 35 and a half touchdowns. I know there's a little bit, obviously there's some rushing. Yeah, so he's at 550 as rush, so but, we didn't mention that. But but when you're looking at the third round versus the 11th round, if you're looking at touchdowns, I mean, even yards, Stafford's projected for more yards yeah, than Allen. Right. It's just the rushing. And, really and one last touchdown yeah. in terms of Vegas. Yeah. So how, how much does the, the rushing and, and especially the... Especially if we're talking six for a passing touchdown, they should be a lot closer than nine rounds separate, right? But regardless of that, um, like... Also, the, the difference is, and Stafford can rush for touch. I mean, he has. I mean, I'm sure he averages two or three. No, right? he hasn't in a while, actually. No. Yeah, he's not no Tom Brady out there. Regardless, I, I just the fact that Stafford, who's projected eight rounds later, is projected to get more yards and within one touchdown. Like, I think the value is there for someone yeah. in, the, in those rounds. I, I'm not necessarily a um, Stafford guy, but I, I think that. Carr, Cousins, Rogers could all do the yeah. same. Yeah, your boy Carr's got pretty solid yardage number forty four fifty, but only twenty nine and a half touchdowns. Yeah, well, not too crazy. Well, but, Carr, uh, Carr is a yards guy. I think yeah. in terms of Vegas, he's right. a yards guy. The touchdowns are he's projected to get eight more than he was last year. Um, yeah, I mean, that, I, you, yeah, that's a good point too because in terms of the passing yards, Derek Carr is projected more than than uh, um, Allen. And in terms of pass, uh, passing touchdowns, it's within four, but you can get Carr in the 12th round. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Anything else jump off? Pretty much the, the, there's a lot of value in the later rounds. Yeah, right? right? I agree. I, I think that this year is the deepest quarterback in terms of fantasy. Like, I think this is – it looks to be one of the more deeper lead, or deep years in terms of – 100%. Yeah, right? there's like, 12, like, legit 
proven studs, and then you got a lot of the guys like the Trey Lances. I think the difference is when you get to the four for passing, right? That's, That's when the when guys I... rise, like Jalen Hurts, yeah. like we did. Yeah. I have uh, two other things I, want, I did forget to highlight here. Uh, I bet we will want to bake that we have to wait a little bit on this one. Trey Lance's rushing total is 500 yards. Now, it's minus 150 right now. Now, what I hope happens is it's going to go up once they do get rid of Jimmy Garoppolo because then it, it, the job is going to be his. Like, there's you no worry there's about a chance that they don't? That'd be really hard for him. They, they need to get rid of him for his confidence. I don't. I think there's a reason they haven't yet. Right. Well, because there's no suitors. Also, like having Garoppolo, because right now he's a free agent, essentially, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. you have to re-sign him for the veteran minimum, and he's there. And you say, hey, you have a chance. To we have job. one year left on this deal, but if they release, it's him, like then... eighteen million or something. Yeah, right? something. It's decent. Yeah, it's the um, same as Sam Darnold. Pretty much. Well, here's my thing: is I'm not betting this at minus one fifty though. I'd rather bet five fifty at even odds than five hundred minus one fifty. Yeah. Because there's a risk he gets hurt, and you got to weigh the odds. If he plays every so, game, the the five hundred seems it's like twenty fucking eight yards a game. And if by he plays every game, I'm assuming he's gonna get that. Yeah. By comparison, Josh Allen's at five fifty, uh, Mahomes three twenty five, Kyler Murray five twenty five, Jalen Hurts seven twenty five. He should be closer to Jalen Hurts' number, right? Would you agree with that? I just I think there's a chance he doesn't start every game. Well, right. If Jimmy Garoppolo is there, he's not there. They're not, not gonna, they're not going to play Nick Mullins, dude. I'm sorry, they, they can't. Mullins. I know. Going games I, I know, but the, Shanahan's too fucking like. No, if they, I think if they're winning enough games, like there's a chance that. Trey Lance gets benched for okay. sure. Um, my next, the last point I want to make I understand here, the point you're making. Yeah, it helps that Jimmy Garoppolo's gone. I, if you believe in Trey Lance, that money, that, that number Easy is... Easy money. Yeah, I don't like the minus 150. Yeah. Uh, the other one is Jalen Hurts, though. His passing touchdown number is at 22.5, which is, dude, that's... Cl- like, Trevor Lawrence is 22.5, right? Two yeah. is 25. Like, it's the lowest. The only one lower is Justin Fields. Yeah. I don't know, the list yeah. I've written yeah. down here, top 18. Yeah. Uh, I'm not worried about that for him because he's listed at 725 rushing yards. It's still 35, 50 in passing yards, decent. Uh, it's it's the receivers I'm worried about because if that's their number, then it's really low. Sure, so sure. I mean, Jalen Goddard's going to get six, right? Devontae Smith's going to get six. That leaves fucking ten left for everyone else, and AJ Brown included. Yeah. I don't know, man. Yeah, no, that's right. AJ Brown touchdown guy. So that's, that's either right. either right. if you believe in those receivers, you best be taking the over on that number. Well, if you believe in Jalen Hurts, like, and you believe in AJ Brown and Devontae Smith and that offense and Dallas Goddard, you can't be drafting all these guys high and having them have twenty-two touchdown passes. You're right. Holy oh, fuck! Right, 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 right. All right, running backs here. Here we go, running backs. Uh, first thing that's, that kind of jumps off the board for me, I'm going to say it right now, is Austin Eckler. Uh, he is 800 yards rushing is his over under. Yeah, oh, that's low. There is no, but and I, I get that he's a PPR guy. The problem is people still want to take him as running back three and half point PPR. Yeah, bro, it's because of touchdowns, right? Oh, he scored twenty guys. Good luck with that. Yeah, he's projected for fourteen hundred yards total, which is the same as DeAndre Swift. Which so, is five, six, seven picks later. Ten sometimes, yeah. right? Yeah, maybe more. I mean, Swift can go to sixteen sometimes. You know, Eckler goes. Well, I think there's echoes. Well, we've been saying that. Eckler is more of a late first round, early second right, round. Right, as we should. Yeah. And the thing is, uh, DeAndre Swift has scored 10 touchdowns in the season before. Nine rushing, I believe. He, You know what I'm saying? It's not like he had, like, he's if anything, never, he scored more touchdowns early in his career than Eckler did. And he's not, yeah. Well, a better he's more capable. He's more I, I, capable. I agree. I agree. Yeah. Who's a better player? Uh, Swift. That's not close. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, Eckler. Uh, so what do we got here? Um, anything else that kind of jumps off to me, I would say that. Nick Chubb's actually only at Well, that's what I'm saying. The 1,200 with Nick Chubb at wide receiver, he's getting, running back. Yeah, uh, where he's getting drafted. 12, 11, 12, mm-hmm. whatever it may be. The 1,200 yard, I mean, the 10 and a half touchdowns, that, that, that jumps out quite a bit. Yeah. Even, even if he's not a PPR guy. Right. You mentioned there's only, there only four running backs that have over 10 projected touchdowns yeah. here. They are Jonathan Taylor, um, Derrick Henry, Joe Mixon, and Nick Chubb. So, and this is rushing touchdowns. Um, and and we have Najee Harris at 9.5. You know, Eckler and CMC are both at 8.5. I'm talking about over 10. But how many, all right, so how many guys are over 1,200 rushing yards projected? Three. Yeah. And, and well, Najee Harris is tied at 1,200. Okay, so four. Four. Uh, and I do actually have a point here. I was looking, uh, when right. I, was, I had to look up some of these players. Uh, there's a big, big, you know, it's like shop your books. There's a big discrepancy on, uh, I think it was Najee Harris. He's at 1,200 rushing yards on, this is DraftKings mostly, mm-hmm. on, um, what was the other one? Uh, I think it was FanDuel, who was at 1,120. So there's a way you could just bet in between. Sure. Under 1,200, over 1,120, win a bowl. Sure. Yeah. I don't know, that's a big discrepancy. You know, 50 is one thing, 80 is a lot. It's one yeah. game. 
regardless, yeah, the fact yeah. that I, I think the, the point is that Chubb is, is twelve hundred yards and almost eleven. Like you have to lose the bat if he scores less than eleven, right? Like, right. Either he scores eleven or he doesn't. Either he gets twelve hundred yards or he doesn't. But there is what three guys, two guys above him. Yeah, they're they're going to do that. Like in terms of consistency. If you're looking for a running back in the third, fourth round, like Chubb is the guy. I'm yeah. Sorry, right? Well, yeah, definitely. Like in PPR, you can give him a third, generally a second. Uh, another thing that stood out to me was Derrick Henry's whopping big numbers: thirteen fifty yeah. and thirteen yeah. and a half touchdown. Pretty big. For Jonathan Taylor, it's fourteen fifty and twelve and a half. So essentially, rushing numbers wash. Yeah. And don't get me wrong; it's not like they're going too far apart. But Taylor's going one, and Henry's going eight. Yeah. So you're getting the same running back. I mean, yeah. what do you think about Cook? Uh, Cook's pretty. You think he's going right. to score 15 touchdowns? Delvin Cook? Yeah, that's what he's No, he's at 9.5. I'm sorry. I thought yeah, 9.5. 1,500 yards total is what it is. So receiving, yeah. maybe three, yeah. four. Uh-huh. So you're, you're talking 13, 14. But yeah. What do, you, what do you think about him? Uh, that, that's one guy. I think he's one of the safest. That's one guy I'm uncertain about. Right? Uh, I like his receiving. What we're talking about is the, the changing of the run scheme a little bit. Yeah. Uh, they'd be smart to get the ball in his hands because we know Delvin Cook's a great player. Uh, and it'd be also smart because he, he gets he gets beaten up, yeah. and you get less beaten up by having more receptions as opposed to running up the middle. Um, yeah, I, I like all these guys here, man. These guys are all like, interchangeable. Look at their numbers, man. They're all similar. You got Cook, Henry, Harris, Mixon. Those guys all within twelve hundred, eleven fifty, thirteen fifty, ten fifty. That's Swift uh, rushing yards. They're all kind of the same, man. So I know you mix in ten fifty. I know you're an ETN guy early. Yeah, it's it's, it's not great. He doesn't have a good height. Seven oh five, five point five. Only projecting him for was that three hundred and twenty yards receiving? Yeah. Uh, I'll take the over in that all fucking day. Yeah. Holy shit! I like that. What about Brees Hall? I know you're a Brees Hall guy. Right? I was. Uh, now apparently it's a one A one B situation, oh, and yeah. uh, I, I faded him a little bit. Those were one of three dollar leagues. Uh, yeah. Eight thirty is his uh, rushing yards. Five point five. I do want to highlight this one though. Uh, holy fuck! We have uh, Gibson still at eight hundred seventy yards rushing. So they're projecting Gibson to have more rushing yards than Josh Jacobs by 120. Now, I don't know if they haven't that, caught up to that or they know something we don't, but that's an easy under for me. Like, um, right? Or we should still be drafting Gibson in the fucking sixth I round. So. Then. I, like, I do too. I, I was anti Gibson until everyone else <laughs> was anti Gibson. Yeah, right? Right. Like now everyone's anti Gibson because all he does is rush for 1,000 yards. He gets 250, 260 right. touches on the ground. Right. Not even counting it is. is Receptions or, or targets. Yeah, Jacobs' right? numbers are real nice though. Seven fifty and seven and a half. Now seven and a half is pretty high. That's up there with uh, Javante Williams with Saquon Barkley, higher than Swift's rushing touchdowns. Almost as high as Eckler's, to be honest. Yeah. But the the yards is low, and like you know, Jacobs goes more than eight every year. He has eight every year, yeah. I should say. And seven seventy five is super low. Yeah. So if he's the lead back, you know, if he's a 50 50 time series, he could beat that. I we, we talked about this a little bit because. You, Brian Robinson, I think, was the guy that you mm-hmm. brought up. It, 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 to me, it's more like, hey, Gibson, get your shit together instead of, hey, Gibson, you're going to lose your job. Right. Like, I, th- I think that uh, Rivera is already committed to him. Like, I, I, just from the years past, like, it's obvious that he, he trusts Gibson. Like, Gibson is one of the focal points of the offense. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I'm hesitant to see that he gets less than 250 touches, for maybe 275 with the just, uh, Conservatively, two seventy five yeah. with the with the total touches between carries and, and targets. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I think that that number is over for sure. Uh, another one I want to highlight here is uh, the Packers backfield. So we have Aaron Jones at they don't have his rushing number up right now, but he has six point five rushing TDs and thirteen hundred yards total. So it's safe to assume that's probably going to be around eight fifty that happened for his rushing. Yeah, thirteen hundred. Yeah. We have uh, AJ Dillon here at seven seventy five rushing and five point five rushing TDs. So essentially only one less rushing TD. Obviously, he's not going to have the same work that Aaron Jones is in the passing game. No. But that's a lot closer than it should be where their ADPs are going. We're looking at a sixth rounder or a second that rounder. That makes sense based on so, the reports. I mean, 1A, right. 1A type deal. Right. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense, by the way. Matt LaFleur is trying to say that they're that, that, that it's supposed to be 1A, 1B. Yeah. He said they have two 1As. Well, same uh, with uh, well, same with McVay, with uh, Anderson and Akers. Same with... Um, right, um, it's just silly. With, with Belichick and, and the, the Patriots guys. Ugly silly. Uh, yeah, no, I, I like Jones over for sure. Like thirteen hundred total yards and five and a half total touchdowns. Yeah, five and a half total touchdowns. No, no, that's rush TDs. That's rush TDs. Oh, okay. He's at six point five rush TDs. Oh. So his total would probably be nine, something like that. 
Yeah, I'll take the over. I probably would too. Yeah, uh, what do you think about sure. Javante Williams? Nine forty-five rush yards, seven point-five touchdowns, twelve fifty total yards. It's a weird one because we don't know his role. You know, we don't. I'll know take the role. over twelve fifty. Yeah, I think so too. And the touchdowns because, is because he could do twelve fifty rushing, like if things break right for him. Right. Uh, Najee Harris over nine point five rushing TDs. I think I want to take the under on that one. Yeah, I don't. I mean, see I don't many, mind Najee Harris, but how many touchdowns are they gonna score? Not that many. I mean. Let's say Trubisky, the quarterback group, let's say, in general, has 20. Mm -hmm. The rushing group in general has 15, right? So I don't know what we're talking, 35, 40 total touchdowns? Yeah. I, 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 I no, I, oh, man, that's tough, actually. Um. Because it's Pittsburgh. Like, Pittsburgh seems to be one of those teams that always defy odds. Like, right. Yeah, they always win nine games. They always make the playoffs. Yeah, exactly. Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, moving on to wide receivers here. Yeah. This is going to be interesting because this is uh, this is where the spreadsheet comes in. You can really see the trends here because a lot of these numbers are up, at least the reception yeah. numbers. Tell me tell me what you're thinking right off the bat here. Well, it's uh, clear in the hierarchy here, definitely in PPR, why these are going the way they are. Um, one thing that stands out for me is Debo. So I'm going to read you the top, the guys yeah, ahead of him. Yeah. Receipts, reception numbers. Jefferson 102, Cup 111, Chase 84, but that's because he has 10 and a half touchdowns over under. Adams 99, Lamb 90. Uh, this and is Samuel. Samuel at 70 catches. Now, the only one similar right below him is Mike Evans at 72, but the difference is Samuel's touchdowns are at five and a half. Uh, Evans at 10 and a half. Because Evans, catch, or sorry, uh, Evans catches yeah, ten touchdowns yeah, every year. Yeah, yeah. So why are we taking Debo? Same. I know he has some rushing upside, but sure. Come on, man. Like the rushing upside is not that. He's not gonna have eight rushing touchdowns, right? Well, I, so <clears throat> here's my delay on that: is they pay them, like right? They're gonna use the them. offense. Like he's the highest paid guy on the offense, mm -hmm. right? Like no doubt. Well, let me go back here real quick. Trey Lance projected thirty five hundred yards and twenty one and a half touchdowns. So they have Kittle who's getting drafted high. Ayuk is getting drafted and he's got all the praise. I, where does that where how does that divvy up, man? No, I, it I'm, doesn't. That's, I, the point. I, I, That's I'm why with, it's so low. I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm not saying Trey Lance can destroy those numbers, but like no, good point. Because if, if like what all right, so over under 70 for you with Samuel. I'm gonna say more. Over. I mean, because it's a low number. But the I point is, so. is like if he has 81 catches, he's a bust. I would say so. Yeah, I mean, he's going he right where C.D. Lamb's going. Right, C.D. Lamb's at 90, and I feel like C.D. Lamb's number's low. So would you rather have Debo or T. Higgins? Debo. Yeah. That was the other thing that stood out to me is T. Higgins. Yeah. Terrible. Trash. So T. Higgins is court, or, no, sorry, uh, wide receiver 11, 12, 13, whatever. He is at 75 catches, 975, and 7.5 touchdowns. Uh, I looked down to Terry McLaurin, who is going in the fourth round about wide receiver 21. 75 catches, 1,000 yards, 6.5 touchdowns. That's yeah. the same numbers. Uh, I look at someone like Allen Robinson, 71 catches, 825, 7.5. Uh, that's essentially the same numbers. It's 150 yards less receiving and same touchdowns, but four, four less receptions. Yeah. Look at how late he's going. Yeah. Some guy that stands out to me in terms of overvalued is St. Brown. Yeah, he, well, yeah, he's 78. Right, well, that's something I want to bet the under on. Yeah, yeah. 78. Eight, but he's, he actually should be valued higher if you go by Vegas numbers, though. Right? 78, 850, and 5.5. His yards seem very low. Like, so they're, they're expecting to be. Well, he's not yards are higher than Juju. Right, next to him, 750 for Juju. That does not make sense. At yeah, all. I would go over on that one for sure. Yeah, I'll take Juju's over at 750. Uh, another thing that I caught my eye was. Vegas right now, and this may change based on the fact that I hear um, Jalen Waddle's been not practicing the last two weeks. Kind of a phantom injury, a quad or something, or okay. a hammy. Uh, he has projected more catches, 85, than Tyreek Hill, 80. Really? That's very weird. Interesting. Yeah, give me Tyreek Hill. I, I know I, Jalen Waddle's more of a PPR guy, like a reception guy. Yeah. I think Tyreek Hill's going to garner more targets in that offense. I mean, you, you brought him yeah. in for a reason, bro. You paid him. He was already bitching about not getting targets in KC. Like he's gonna be chirping real bad if Jalen yeah. Waddle's the number one there. Yeah, I mean, at least this first he's year, there right? to prove himself, so he yeah. wants the opportunity. Yeah, yeah. eventually yeah. you pass the torch, maybe next year or the year after. Yeah, not this year, dude. He's 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 hungry and they need him. Because... No, I, I'm I'm loving these these lower guys. Like, for, I mean, the thing that really stands out to me is Kirk at sixty nine. So you know how many catches he had last year? Probably eighty one. Seven, I think it was seventy eight. Okay. How many yards? 
9,800, like, so these are numbers, like, now he's number one guy. Yeah, now he's number one. Yeah. And, and um, those are, that's something that's standing out to me. The fact that uh, Lockett had his career year in terms of yards last year, I mean, with half the year without, with Geno Smith, essentially, yeah. right? Like, well, right now, Lockett essentially has the same, DK doesn't have his yardage number up. They pretty much have the same projections, even though DK is a fifth Yeah, so Lockett, to me, is a steal right now. In drafts? I mean, he, he's like all Zaka does is get wide open. Yeah, yeah, that's right, all right. he DK does. DK has more of the buzz, right? Because he's a very he's again. They remind me of like, Reggie you know, Wayne and Marvin Harrison. Don't you still like DK's numbers though? Uh, sixty six receptions and all of his yards up at six point five touchdowns, bro. He's gonna kill sixty six. I like that. Yeah, I like the yeah. six point five too. He only catches twelve a no, year. I, I like yeah. one of those receivers. I don't. I'm not sure. If I, I like. I guess I like Lock a little bit more because he's later. Like you can get him in the ninth or tenth round, where you, you have to take DK in the fifth or sixth. Yeah. Um. I mean, if it's Locke, of course you like DK because of the, the big play potential, but Locke, it to me, is a is a steal later, especially full PPR. Like, yeah. I, I think I think he's beating that number. I think he's beating Right, in a super deep league. I get that, too. Um, so, Keenan Allen here and Mike Williams. So, this is – the thing is, an underdog, literally Mike Williams goes ahead of Keenan Allen. That's half-point PPR. But we have Keenan Allen here, 97 catches, 1,050 yards, and 7.5 touchdowns. Mike Williams, 65 catches, 1,000, 6.5. So essentially everything is the same except for Keenan Allen is going to have 32 more catches projected. So why are they taking Mike Williams ahead of Keenan Allen? Like, I get the section yeah. in some best ball and all that Touchdowns, shit. Touchdowns, I suppose, right? Like, that's I know, but 30 catches for. and even a half point still 15 more points. Yeah. yeah like, I'm, not, I'm not in love with that. In full PPR, it's 30 more points. So It would have to be – you get like a five – Point bonus if you get like a forty yard catch, right. like that's the only way you're taking Mike Williams over Keenan Allen to me, right? In any form, any format. Um, another one here is the uh, the, the Broncos receivers here. Uh, okay. Sutton sixty two, and no yardage up at sixty two catches, five point five touchdowns. We have Judy for seventy two catches and six point five touchdowns. So they're projecting somehow catches. Judy to have more touchdowns than Sutton, which is weird because you know yeah. Judy's more of the possession guy. Yeah. That's saying he's a possession guy, but he's more of the the guys that have more catches. He's more of the title lock than he is DK. There you go. Yeah. So it's crazy that Vegas is projecting Judy to have more touchdowns, or at least that's what the betting odds say. Hmm. Uh and definitely more catches, but the touchdowns, I don't know. So like obviously Judy ahead of Sutton, we've been saying that all year. Yeah. Like since fucking February. I mean, yeah, yeah, no. Well, we've all, we've always been uh, Judy guys. Um, Gabe Davis here, sixty receptions, which is quite low. I would say so. But eight seventy five and seven point five touchdowns. So they're projecting. That's that's a pretty high number. Seven point five. Like people are really high on on Gabe. The point is, they're projecting him to have more touchdowns than AJ Brown by a full number. Okay. Yeah, I'm not on that. Not but really. look at the touchdowns that the quarterbacks are going to be throwing. That's why it is. He's number two, right? Yeah. There's only so many touchdowns Jalen Hurts is going to throw. See, that's a good point because that makes more sense. I and mean, the yards, AJ Brown but in a vacuum, AJ Brown or Gabe Davis. If well, AJ Brown. If there was yeah, no, that's, one, what, yeah, that's what I'm saying. But if I'd rather have, I'd rather have Gabe Davis in the fifth and AJ Brown in the second. Very yeah, right. Very fair. We were losing out on what, 14 catches and 150 yards, but you're getting an extra touchdown. Yeah. Just saying, like that's in four round difference. Sometimes you're getting Gabe in the sixth. Yeah. AJ Brown's rarely. I like. I like AJ Brown in the early third. It's crazy that Godwin still slotted in for 80. No, Godwin isn't isn't listed. You're looking at the wrong one. That's, that's Brown. No, this is the same Brown. No, he's not, he's Godwin's not not up, which okay. sucks. Neither right. is Cooper because of the quarterback situation. Um, anyone else here later? Devontae Smith, uh, 62 catches, 875 and 5.5. So not that far off from A.J. Brown, dude. You know, eight less catches, 100 less yards, and one less touchdown. What do you think about Cooks? What is Cooks at? Uh, 82, 950, and 5.5. 5. I think those are just nominal numbers. Those they have are to standard, play like, just, yeah. We're, we're gonna, right. you, good luck. Guess, guess, right? Yeah, I don't I don't like Cooks. But what's your guess? This. Uh, in terms of do I like the, the projection for him? Yeah. Uh, I think that's right about where he should be. He'll probably have 80 catches. He'll probably have 1,000 yards. But do you think he should be down. there? Do you think he should be right next to McLaurin and In DK terms of his ranks? No, because Brandon... All those guys offer. Like, who are more confident? So that's what I'm saying. Like that, that's uh, the that's what I want. Uh, all those guys offer way more elite ceiling based on quarterback play, offense, talent. Brandon Cooks offers a floor those guys don't offer because he does it every year. Yeah, I right? think Cooks He's gonna have a thousand. I think yards, Cooks is good uh, for four catches and and yeah, 50 sixty-five yards, yards and, and a corner, really cut, quarter touchdown, yeah. right? Yeah, right. Uh, 
Not a, not a touch on a quarter. I don't yeah. think so. Um, in terms of these early guys, uh, I told you I, I was saying T. Higgins. Bateman's a little aggressive to me. 70, 8, 50, and 5.5, yeah. Well, I think the but touchdowns especially are aggressive. The thing Bateman. is is that we saw what Hollywood Brown did last year, and Hollywood Brown is not. Who's, like, well, who's a better player? Uh, in terms of, like, who's going to better for, like, being a possession receiver, right. not Hollywood Brown. Like, you're not. Like, yeah, I like Hollywood Brown. Obviously, with, 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 uh, with Bateman, you're still looking for big plays, obviously. Yeah. Like, you're looking for touchdowns because 70 catches is what. I'm so, uh, one thing I did see out also, DJ Moore, 4.5 touchdowns. Hammering that number. Uh, now, everyone else in this range has, no one has below 5.5. You have to go all the way down to another Moore. Elijah Moore on the Jets, mind you, to have a guy that we I did the top uh, about thirty six plus I added uh, Kirk and lock it in. Mm -hmm. So top forty guys here, no one has lower number and more ties it. And the fact DJ that you Moore. had to add these guys in, yeah, weren't even in the top. So and those guys are a guy that were had aggressive and I liked right. Uh, uh, no, so DJ Moore's touchdown like number. I like it. Uh, the only one that's like similar I see here. Which is crazy is Debo Samuel's receiving number at 5.5. That like stands out to where they're yeah, going. Yeah. So I really love DJ Moore's touchdown number. Uh, yeah, and DJ the thing Moore is, the rest is. of his numbers are 85 catches, 1075, and 4.5. Yeah. So his catches are up there with fucking CD Lamb, right? So you're getting the opportunity. His yard yardage is up there with fucking Mike Evans. Yeah. Yet they're saying he's not going to score any touchdowns because he hasn't. But Baker Mayfield, one thing Baker Mayfield does is kind of throw touchdowns. He can throw 26. I've seen him Go four, yeah. multiple Yeah, times. you know what uh, the high he ever had before is like 19. That's why DJ Moore had four touchdowns well, a year because the quarterback was only 19 touchdowns. A lot of people don't mention this, but he set the rookie record for touchdowns in a single season. Yeah. Baker did. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, he And then had an awesome year after that. I mean. He he also had a torn fucking labrum mm -hmm. when he was playing this year. Like, the, yeah. The last year. So. Oh, I want to touch on Michael Thomas here. <laughs> That's, sure. I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on here, but uh, 70 catches, 800 yards, 5.5. Now it's really difficult. But that is I'm not touching right, the touchdown. It's, no, but it is downright disrespectful if the man's healthy. I mean, yeah. that is downright disrespectful. Uh, it's a they they can set it that he's never low. had that many. That, that little. I oh, say. not even close. He's never had within twenty eight of them. That's what I'm saying. Right? He's never like, had that little. Ninety eight his rookie he's year. Been like hundred every. So year. yeah, besides his rookie year, it's still like ninety seven. Yeah, so, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Uh, the thing is, I think there's so much hate that have to set it that low. Um, well, plus, I mean, a lot of A is getting a lot of hype. Uh, yeah. They have uh, Landry, whatever. I mean. Um, I, Deontay I, Johnson. I, the, Saints, the Saints are going to be good this year. Deontay Johnson, uh, which is crazy, is, has the same numbers as Moore. Actually, projected more touchdowns by two, 85, 1,000, and 6.5. Hmm. I don't like that. No. Um, I mean. I like Deontay, but not. I think as a player, but. How many? I mean, how many touchdowns do you expect the the, the Steelers to score? Twenty-two. I mean, in terms of passing touchdowns, I feel like it's gonna be similar to the fucking like. Why does he have a, as high of a touchdown number as fucking AJ Brown? No. I get like probably better, maybe yeah, better so, passing right, touchdowns, so, but not many. Yeah, over under like twenty-five. Who, who scores more? Like passing Hertz touchdowns or, or Trubisky or or pick it hurts. Pick it, hurts. Pick it, hurts. Probably tie. Probably tie. Yeah, but who's the clear number one? Like, and who isn't? Yeah. You know, like who has more competition? Like, I know Devontae Smith's solid, but like AJ Brown, Garner's fucking red yeah, zone. Well, looks, also man. Gardner. I mean, I think Gardner's a better backup than. Oh, now you love Gardner. You love well, Gardner. Good lord, man, he's good. Yeah. So, uh, what do you think about this number? Uh, Jamar Chase, eighty-four receptions. Um, I, I feel that, like that's, I think that's on the low. low. Oh, I mean, it's well. Here's the thing: is I fully expect him. To, what do you think of what do you, what do you think of Chase? What do you think of him? Big plays. Yeah, so how many do you expect to have an eighty four big plays? No, no, no. I <laughs> expect so he had eighty one as rookie year with fourteen hundred and fifty five yards, which is absolutely insane. Yeah. Uh I expect less bigger plays and more than working the ball to him. Is I guess what I'm saying? Sure. Where he might only have twelve hundred and fifty yards receiving. Like if I had to make my bet I'd bet over what's his yardage number, it's only twelve fifty. Fuck. I I'd bet under fourteen hundred yards, but over the catches. Okay. Obviously, the number isn't fourteen fifty. That's insane. But like, if I can say under twelve fifty, but I'm going over that that, that catch. I, so essentially, you're saying he's Randy Moss. Yeah, yeah, but I think the game. I mean, you, him, like, the question to me, the question is, do you think he's that elite? Is he a Hall of Fame receiver? Looks to be one. 
looks at, about a year ago to this day, we're sitting there making dolphin jokes at the motherfucker, that's right, and that's he's right. fucking that's making right. us eat our fucking dicks, dude. That's right. And Fuck I mean, him, he has Pearl throwing to him. Yeah, it's. I mean, that's a beautiful combination. Yeah. Pete Higgins and like we're not Higgins guys, but like you know they 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 could lose one of their top two receivers. Yeah, I expect them to have a receivers. better running game, so their play action is going to uh-huh. be better. I mean, well, there's a lot. They're of definitely going to have a better old line. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. No, you're right. You're right. So, thanks. That's a tough one. That's a tough one. Uh, anything else that stands out to you? I see Thielen, uh, seven point five touchdowns, which actually seems kind of low, but he's not going to stay healthy, so. All right, so uh, here, here's a good exercise. Uh, last year, who was, in terms of stats, number one receiver had 140 catches and 18, mm-hmm. 1900 yards yeah. and 18 touchdowns. Yeah, it was one there's guy. There's no one that's sniffing that well, in terms yeah. of the odds. They're not going to put but anything at that. Well, there's going to be someone that's going to score 15, yeah, 1500 yeah. yards and 120 catches, right? Yeah. Who's most likely? Justin Jefferson, obviously, because of where he's ranked. Uh, I'm telling you, for me, it's CD Lamb, bro. Like I'm, I'm telling you, like CD Lamb is. Well, what, what you know? Why did Cooper Cup do that? He was also amazing, super efficient. Didn't Cooper Cup have 190 targets last year, or 180? It was some crazy yeah. ass number, dude. Yeah. Like it was legit, like 11 targets you a game. Think, you don't think Allen Robinson affects that at all? No, he does. I'm just saying, like last year, why did Cooper Cup do that? Because he was schemed open, right? Matt Stafford, they they played great, right? Uh, the Robert Woods injury, like it was a perfect storm, right? Uh, and all those targets, like I don't care if you were inefficient, he was efficient with those targets, which is crazy. It's targets. And who's going to get 170 targets? Who's most likely to get 170 targets? Lamb. I think he's the most likely of all these guys. I'm Jefferson. sorry, dude. No, Jefferson, Jefferson has fucking Irv Smith coming back. Dalvin Cook. But their offense is going to be... Well, I get it. But, dude, a lot of competition. Cooper Cup has Allen Robinson coming back Adams, in. Adams. going to be getting double teamed. Adams, Adams, maybe. But Adams has fucking... Renfro and Darren Waller and Josh Jacobs. Yeah, Diggs has fucking Gabe Davis coming in. He's got fucking, I know you hate Gabe Davis, but like, now they, they have running backs to throw into. They have Dawson Knox, like. Crowder. Dude, C.D. Yeah. Lamb has Dalton Schultz. McKenzie. Dalton Schultz. And then yeah. maybe Michael Gallup. I'm just saying. Who's most, and we don't think the Cowboys are going to be as good this year. Yeah. Who's most likely to see 170 targets? This dude. He's a better player than uh, he'll make 170 targets into 100. All right, so catches. here's why I disagree. Right? Is because I think the Cowboys are good enough to be competitive, mm-hmm. where they're not chasing 14 points. I'm not saying they are. So I, I think if they have more three and outs, that's going to be more detrimental versus them being a bunch of a million three and outs, and then all of a sudden they're down 14 or 21 points and they're chasing, and that's how he gets 100. I'm just saying, give me another guy. You can't count. Don't count Jefferson and Cup. Okay. Give me another guy that's, that has a potential oh, of 170 Tyree targets. Tyreek Hill? 1,000 yards? Yeah. When was the last time Tyreek Hill had 1,000 yards? Like, never? It was like 1,400? Yeah, yeah. That's, I mean, you're, you're getting a fucking 40% advantage there. I think that's nice. Well, and you also have uh, Waddle with 925. Yeah, I mean. But I want you to give me another receiver, but outside the top two guys, take off Diggs, too. Even though, uh, keep Diggs in there. I don't think Diggs has a potential for 170. Too many other guys that has 170 target potential. There's nobody. Mm. Hill has Waddle, AJ Brown. They don't throw the ball. Higgins has fucking like go down the list. Pittman maybe maybe Pittman, but they run the ball too much. I would say the 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 dark horse is McLaurin. Okay, there you go. That's what I'm saying right. That's the dark horse. 170 is crazy. Like that's crazy when he's you know like. But in terms of the modern like yeah, he he garners that. I know attention. people are good. hating no hating on Wentz right now. I like now, that, but like. He's like twenty-seven touchdowns and yeah. only like nine five. interceptions. It was like five picks, bro. It was yeah. crazy. No, I mean, have you ever seen a guy get more hate for like those numbers? Yeah, because it wasn't about the numbers; it was the reckless play, the fumbles. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But well, I mean, well, Jim well, Ursay, well, dude, Jim Ursay is still chirping about that shit. Did you hear that? It was the two or three picks in the last game. Right? Yeah, Jim Ursay is still chirping like last week about Carson Wentz, bro. It's like a he's like a fucking a beaten down ex boyfriend. Yeah, it's like watching his girlfriend marry some like lawyer. But I think McLaurin like, that slut has herpes, dude. <laughs> like you gave her the herpes. I don't care. Yeah. She still has herpes. Fuck that. She yeah. fucked me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Fucking whore. No, I think McLaurin is a dark horse in terms of being the best, like a top. I agree. Receiver, yeah. All right. Uh, anything else stand out to you, real quick? That that you know uh, jumps off the page to you? It's calling your name, Kappa. Not really. I mean, who's this guy? That's Elijah. that's Elijah Moore. Yeah. yeah. Um, In our yard is kind of a lot, but I mean, he's good. Yeah, I mean, they need someone to throw the ball. <clears throat> um, Thielen at sixty nine seems 
pretty uh, eight and a, seven and a half touchdowns. That seems pretty high. Yeah, I mean, I, I know that's just the the one. catches seem high. Well, I mean, just in general, it seems. But because he also has to stay healthy, so I also expect. I mean, um, it's really more of these guys at the tail end where I'm looking at the guys that have less than sixty five catches, but like Kirk's the number one receiver. Lockett yeah. is the possession receiver. Uh-huh. Um, Juju well, has Mahomes, St. Brown. We don't know anything about Cooper. I mean, Juju's not. Yeah, I mean, St. Juju, Brown should not be higher than any. Juju's, Juju's never had less than fucking 90 catches, right? Like, 85 right. catches. Like, yeah. I mean, that, that that's interesting, but. um, Not, I mean, I think we I think we covered it pretty much. Oh, yeah. All right. Well, we will be back next week with uh, some. We're going to go through these, uh, not individually, but we're going to have our pr- player props who we're betting on. This is a nice exercise to do before that. Okay. And then. We're going to do one more fan tracks, $250 draft for you, and then our PPs. I'm going to show you our PPs. We're going to pull our pants down and show you our poor players and our top 10 guys that is going to, you know, make or break our teams. Hopefully, we've been talking about them a lot. You're going to have some of them, too. So, Rob Squared. And it's been a complete joy.